Hello friends, welcome you on day two of our Kundu Day Challenge to become expert in DevOps and Cloud. I would like to thank each one of you who have gone through my day one session and I got many positive response from that one and so many of you like that one. So today we are going to discuss about cloud computing. Mostly we will talk about the untouched cloud computing that that means that people very rarely talk about that and the thing is uh, in our organization also it is used very rarely but the thing is that is actually a new approach by because you know cloud computing is the delivery of computing resources over the internet right these resources can be anything like server network storage databases anything and we can get these resources on demand and from the shared pool of resources at our fingertip and also without the need for personal hardware infrastructure for that one however traditional cloud computing also has its own issues so we will discuss those as well now let's understand why we should learn cloud computing before deep diving into cloud computing and also we will understand where actually it can be used so cloud computing can be used in any field any domain let's talk about them one by one first we'll start for the small businesses are cloud computing for small businesses beneficial yes we can use cloud computing to save money on it cost so we can rent servers and storage as per our need and only pay for what we are using so this can be a great way for a small business businesses to get started with cloud computing so let's take the example of any small restaurant you can use cloud computing to store your customer data manage your inventory and take online orders so the thing is this can help you save money on hardware and software it can also make it easier to manage your business similar to small businesses we can use cloud computing for large enterprises educational institutions we can use it for government ag government agencies non-profit organizations healthcare organizations we can use it for financial institutions retailers manufacturing companies and also we can use it for media and entertainment companies so to save time we are not going in deep for these all examples which i gave but i'll share the document on telegram now let's talk about cloud computing cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet it's like having an on-demand shared pool of resources at our fingertips where we can request at any point of time 24 by 7 through a service catalog and after requesting we will have the access of that resource immediately now we need to understand who will take care of this infrastructure what we are requesting so in our case it will be maintained or updated by the cloud provider who are these cloud provider these are the cloud provider from the market if we will talk about it's like amazon web services aws Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So there are many cloud available in the market and they have their own unique feature. So accordingly, we can request. So now we are having option to choose from any one of them. Now we will understand how we can say that uh, we can be a cloud provider. Okay, so there are certain uh, characteristics that you need to fulfill to become a cloud provider. First is on-demand self-service. Yes, your consumer can access to cloud cap computing capabilities such as servers, storage application as per their need and requirement without any human interaction. Next thing it should fulfill that it should be accessed through broad network. That means cloud capabilities are accessible over the web browser throughout any devices. There should be not be any restriction either it is a laptop, desktop, smartphone or tablet. You, it should be accessible from any of the devices. The next fulfillment is it should follow the resource pooling feature. That means that cloud provider share the same physical resources with multiple consumers and follow multi-tenant model. Next thing, it should follow rapid elasticity. That means cloud is flexible and scalable as per need. So consumer can quickly add or remove computing resources as per their need. The last thing, it should follow major services. That means there should not be any upfront cost for any resource. So cloud provider build the consumer for the resources they consume actually so only they should follow pay as per use model now let's understand about service model we are having to understand that let's go through the services which is provided by different cloud providers cloud providers offer so here on this page you can see the services from microsoft azure here you can see the category you can go to any category and you can see the related services for that particular category so there are many 
services offered by Microsoft Azure. Similarly, if you go to AWS Cloud platform, there also you can see the services available under different category. Here you can choose it, and here you have the services which is available always free. And also they are having uh, some plan like 12 months free plan there. You can use those services here. It will mention you, you can use this service 12 months for free. Also, these are the services from AWS. If you go to my, uh, Google Cloud here also, you can get the services based on category. So there are different cloud, different services. And uh, we are having few services which are similar in all cloud providers. Now let's understand about service model. We are having three service models. As we already seen that every cloud provider offers many services in different categories. But how these services are offered? For that one, they divided the all services into three models. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. We will talk about these in more detail in our next session. But today we need to understand what type of control or access we will have so the thing is uh, in general uh, any cloud provider having the data centers means the physical location they are having the networking firewalls and equipment related to that one they are having servers and storage physical i'm talking about they are having the operating system development tools and hosted application everything they are having so the thing is the uh, when we are going for the infrastructure as a service we will have the access from the operating system till hosted application that means we will have the option to choose operating system as per our need we have the option to code anything on top of our operating system and we can launch our application as well this is so infrastructure as a code will have the major control okay when we are going for for the platform as a service we will have the access from the uh, runtime environment that means you will not have the option to choose operating system but on which platform you want to develop your code or write your code you can directly have the access from that one in the last we are having software as a service this is a license based model where you will have direct uh, credential to access the application like we are having access to office 365 or our gmail account so this is how these, these all services are divided into infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. In short, we need to remember that when we are going for infrastructure as a service, we will have more control. But for when we are having more control, we need to pay more for that one. If we are going for platform as a service, we will have less control, then we need to pay a little bit less than infrastructure as a service. And software as a service is the quickest one and it is the cheapest model from the cloud service provider there is also an emerging model beyond these three models that is our serverless computing that can provide a paper use environment that is great for startups or we can say small teams in order to reduce monthly cost where we no need to worry about any infrastructure means whatever application we are using or we are running the code we no need to worry about underlying infrastructure and we no need to pay anything for that one the only thing we need to pay for how long we want to run our code and how many times it will run that's it now let's talk about cloud deployment model talks about how our infrastructure is configured so we are having three types of deployment model private cloud public cloud and hybrid cloud as the name says private cloud belong to any particular entity means it can be belong to your organization itself where you have all control that means it belongs to private cloud when we are talking about public cloud it's uh, available for everyone and anybody can use that cloud for their application and services and it's uh, there might be possible that your in where your application is hosted that hardware is shared by other organization next we are having hybrid cloud model that is a combination of private and public cloud that means there is some cases where we keep some of the component with us from our services and some for some of the services we use public cloud in that case that is known as a hybrid cloud now let's talk about benefits of cloud computing first benefit we are having cost saving yes it is one of the most significant advantage we are having from the cloud computing either you are a small business enterprise business or any area if you are using cloud computing you can save the cost and you just need to pay what you are using next to advantage we are having scalability yes cloud computing provides the foundation for businesses to scale their offerings quickly and efficiently next advantage we are having accessibility cloud computing provides continuous access to services and features either you are using any of the devices it's a mobile laptop desktop or tablets you will have same level of accessibility next advantage we are having better collaboration yes 
cloud computing makes it easier for teams to collaborate together even when working remotely from different location next advantage we are having disaster recovery yes uh, this is one of the major benefit we are having from cloud like cloud providers offer robust backup and disaster recovery solutions so our data is safe stored in multiple locations and it reduces the risk of data loss due to any hardware failure or any natural disasters next to benefit we are having rapid deployment we can set up servers and services in the cloud very quickly and straightforward often it takes minutes now in compared to weeks or months what actually traditional infrastructure takes next advantage we are having insights cloud computing provides organization with the ability to deliver real time insights into their data which helps companies improve their decision making process so we can have the dashboard of the resources what we are using so accordingly we can uh, modify as per our demand key cloud providers as we know there are multiple cloud providers available but based on market size i have mentioned five popular cloud here first is aws that is a public cloud and whenever you are looking for a strong compute storage or any extensive partner ecosystem then aws is a great choice if you are looking for best in class windows compatibility it's for example you are having huge infrastructure which is using uh, application which is compatible with windows operating system then it is good to go with the microsoft azure that is also a public cloud if you are looking for a strongest for containers use or ai or machine learning learning then gcp is a great choice for you so these all three are the comes under public cloud when we are talking about ibm cloud it's provide both kind of cloud like public and private cloud so the thing is uh, it's good for the application which is having dependency on the legacy infrastructure or legacy application or if you are looking for bare metal servers or virtual instances then ibm cloud is best oracle cloud that is also offering public and private cloud feature and if you are using oracle db then it, it give you a flexibility that you can use the same licenses in the oci oracle cloud itself so you no need to pay again for the same licenses and uh, it's good it also provide drcc feature that means it can come to your organization or, or your on premises and set up the, uh, the infrastructure there that will provide the feature of cloud so you can use cloud at customer feature from the oracle cloud so these are the key cloud providers i hope you find this video hel helpful if you learn something new then don't forget to click on like button share with your friends and don't forget to join telegram channel because we there you will get the latest updates and more learning content See you in the next video tomorrow.